Well, they call it Thunder Valley. And if you ask me, it's one of the coolest places on the planet. Right behind me, Bristol Dragway carved between two mountains. And over in that direction, the fastest half mile in racing, Bristol Motor Speedway. In between, some great show cars, some of the most fabulous Chevrolets you will ever see. You are gonna love the next half hour. This is the Menard Chevy Show. Let's get things rolling with a Bristol themed producer's pick. Well, it's only fitting that we're here in the shadow of one of NASCAR's most famous tracks and we find a car with some great NASCAR lineage. Alan, tell me what the connection is with this car and NASCAR. We were lucky enough to be able to come up with a couple of the NASCAR SB2 engines that they don't use anymore. We buy the engines from the teams and then we take them to Buck Race Engines. This motor is a 431. It's a stroker motor. It's got 10 F1 pistons. All the cylinder heads are right off of the SB2 motor, super flow heads in them on an intake and stuff. So this thing makes about 700 horsepower to the rear wheels. We can make the motors stay at 180 degrees and never have any kind of oiling problems. We haven't broke one yet. Now I know the color's not factory. Tell me about that. I was actually driving down the street one day and passed a car that I saw this color on, turned around and followed the car for about two miles to look at it with the sun hitting it, and it was a Lexus. How about the suspension? What do you have underneath? It's TCI front suspension, the whole front clip, complete tube chassis car underneath, and all it hooks to what we built, uh, five length. It's, it's actually, the car is really not lowered that much. The car was built like this. That's where you see it is what we moved the frame up inside the car, about three inches. It's a coilover car, and we can adjust it with what we got up and down four inches. It rides super, drives super. It's almost like a stock street car, pension-wise. Now, the interior is anything but stock. You know, I can't do justice to stand here and tell you about this interior because a good friend of mine, Stephen Everhart, that did this car. It's all leather, handmade. I mean, this was made out of hides. He did a lot of the design work in the car, and everything in there has a reason. And the holes in the seat are for cooling. When you're driving behind the screen, there's either a fan or a stereo speaker. Then when you get into the dash here, it's all electronic, keyless, start and all. Got power steering, power brakes, air conditioning, and it freezes you. It'll run you out of the car. Just a beautiful car, just a beautiful car. David Clark traveled over the mountains from North Carolina. His El Camino is Mola Mucho, and it's the recipient of this week's OPGI Original Award. It's a 1959 El Camino. It's the first El Camino they ever built. And I think they've done an outstanding job on the design and building of the car. The style, the body style of it, the cat eye, tail lights and everything, it's just unique and different. It's got its own character about it, its own personality. You see one come down the road, you recognize it right off. Tell me what you have under the hood. It's an LT1, a 96 Caprice police car engine. The frame, the drivetrain, the suspension, everything's from a 96 Caprice. And it will fly. It's what you call a retro rod. You got an old body style sitting on top of a brand new chassis, brand new car, and air conditioning, and you drive just like a modern day car. How much do you drive it? It's got almost 17,000 miles on it. The interior looks pretty original. Tell me about the inside of the car. Yeah, pretty much it kept the original seat patterns, I think. Like the bucket seats, just repadded it, make it a lot softer. So when we redone this, we did it all in red because it pops with the black, makes it stand out. The wheels kind of stand out to me. Tell me about them. I think this kind of car deserves spinner wheels on, chrome wheels with the black and everything. It just makes it shows up pretty good. I didn't want it to look too plain Jane. I wanted it to pop. And for the black car, chrome, best thing in the world makes it pop. What do people say most to you when they see this vehicle? When they look closely, this car's perfect. They can't find no flaws with the car at all. It's, it says perfect, the paint, the engine, the interior, the done or neat of it. The car don't have many flaws about it. Dave's restored 27 cars in his lifetime, and 18 of them have won national awards. He says he tries to keep the look of every one of them authentic, and for every single restoration, he's used parts from OPGI. Dave Clark's feeling glad all over since he's the winner of our OPGI Original Award. Still lots more to come from the Menard Chevy Show here in Bristol. Lots more from race cars, show cars, and of course, the swap meet. And uh, you know, when you tease what's coming up next in the show, they call it a bumper to break. Here's your bumper to break. 
The Menard Chevy Show is brought to you by Chris Austin's Chassis Works, the home of higher technology. C-Max, the one product for your engine, transmission, and fuel system. Scog and Dickey Part Center, your source for custom-built street-to-strip power. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. When you come to a Menard Chevy show, you never know what you're going to find. Of course, lots of great racing action, lots of great cars in the pit area. And here in Bristol, a swap meet. You can find carburetors, steering wheels, windshields, and heck, you can even find a whole car like this 1948 Chevy Stylemaster. Pick it up, maybe you can fix it up and have it ready for next year's show. Every car has a story behind it, and Chuck Stone's 63 Corvette is no exception. It's our next producer's pick. They made 10,000 of them. It's a red on red car. It's a matching numbers, 327, 340 horse car. Numbers on the car match down to the alternator. The dash has been restored. The clock's been restored. It took me about six years to get it going. Had some good help on the car. We sanded it and painted it and whatever. And I told some friends of mine, they want to know how I got it so slick. And I told them I wet sanded it with $100 bills. <laughs> I've been 35 years trying to buy it. I graduated from college in 70, and I happened to be driving and just look across the road, spot this car. So being a car guy, turn around and go back. And met Mr. Owens there, and he and I talked, asked him if he wanted to sell it. Of course, he said no. So I told him to hide it because I was going to stop every time I come by. Over the years, he and I got to be real good friends, and uh, we laughed about it a lot. One particular day, I stopped, and another guy came to the door and said, Mr. Owens moved to Bristol. Till he bought a service station. Well, I run all over these roads here trying to find him. Never could find him. You know, nobody knew nothing about it because it never had been out of the garage. So a friend of mine called me and said, I found a car you might be interested in. I said, where is it at? And he said, Bristol. So he gave me her phone number. She and I talked, and she had another car, a 73 model, and she was wanting to sell them together. I went deer hunting, and I was miserable while I was gone for it. She'd sell it to somebody else, so I bought both cars off of her. Since then, she and I have made real good friends. She came to the Corvette show and cried, me too, and uh, pretty, a lot of good friends. Every car's got a story and that's it. <laughs> what a great story. Can't decide which classic car to bring to the car show? Well, bring them both. That's what James Carswell did. Boy, do we have a twofer for you. This is a 1949 Mercury with a big black Chevrolet. That lead sled belongs to James Carswell. He also has this stunning Chevrolet pickup. I had Mercury for five or six years. I've had the truck since 1971. This is a full custom, nine inch four drawer in, bow tie block, 12 over on the blower, 400 turbo, 5,000 style, 620 gear, it's got a Grand Am interior, digital dash been put in. Ricardo seats and uh, brandy wine, Halle brands. Got about everything you can put on one. He did some interesting treatment with the uh, windshield of the truck. Usually yeah. there's a chrome piece there, but that's not there anymore. No, I made it a solid piece of glass. Uh, butted two pieces together and sealed it. The taillights came from an interesting source, yeah, didn't they? From a Subaru. They turned straight up and I turned them sideways. How does this do off the line, and then what happens after 60 feet? It turns sideways, it starts making horsepower, and it goes left. Mercury's got a 70 model 396, 400 turbo, 373 paws, Ford 9 inch. Got air condition, and power steering, power brakes, got all the luxuries you can have on one. The top's been chopped four inches in the back, three inches in the front. Got a Fulton sun visor. That's a very rare sun visor, made two years only. It's got full custom wheels on it. Them is not hubcaps, them's real wheels. Side pipes, even got the old curb fillers. It's got real bot lights on it and everything. Everything on the car is real. What are some of the things you do that, that no one else does? I like the car slick underneath, as I do on top. I don't like no rough edges. You rub the frame out just like you rub the body out. Underneath the fenders, you rub those just like you rub everything else. Door jams, everything about it, even hinges, I had them chrome. How did you arrive at the color? Well, I got a wife. She gets to pick her colors, I get to pick my colors. Sometimes we bring a three-party in, because all of us is arguing a little bit. The wheels, it took about four or five people, because them Halibrands are out of sight, because them true knockoffs and everything. 
Yeah, that took quite a few people to get that done because that's what I wanted and she didn't want that. But I got it. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Up next, we learn more about Bristol Dragway, our host facility this week, and we still have a boatload of classic Chevys to show you. This is the Menard Chevy Show from Bristol, Tennessee. Welcome back to Bristol Dragway, Thunder Valley. This weekend, it's our host for the Menard Chevy Show, but there's plenty going on throughout the rest of the year as well. Most folks know you guys for the national event here, but there's a lot more going on than that, right? Yeah, we've got our local bracket program that runs several times a year, as well as our street program, Street Fights, that comes out select Saturday nights, our Chevy show, our big junior event, big money bracket races. We've got all kinds of stuff here at Bristol Dragway. And even through the Christmas season, you guys are busy. Yeah, we've got our uh, Speedway and Lights program. It's great. It's from Thanksgiving to right after Christmas. Millions of lights. You can come through, do all the stuff in the infield. There's an ice rink, all kinds of fun stuff, and it supports the kids and local charities. It's a really great deal. What do folks like about coming to Bristol Dragway? When you're here, you're staged up on the line, or you're sitting in the grandstands, you look down through there, just the picturesque view and everything. And it's just the sound and the roar. It's why it's called Thunder Valley. Clyde Schaefer is turning a bunch of heads with his 1977 Scottsdale 4x4, and rightfully so. It's the winner of this week's Rock Auto Restored Award. Clyde Schaefer came from Metropolis, Illinois, about 400 miles to show off this 77 pickup. Now, this truck is 41 years old. How long's your history with it? Ordered it new from the dealership. I waited on it to come in, took a couple months. You know, I worked for the dealership, and I had to service it myself. They said, you, you gotta do it, you're too picky. As well as I took care of it and everything, I still had some rust issues on it, so I decided to restore it to drive. Maybe we can take it to a show and see what it does. Got best to show with it, and so, hey, this is a new purpose for the truck. So I've been showing it now for 18 years. Now you trailered it here, but I understand you still drive this truck a lot. Since I restored it in 98, I've got 89 to 90,000 on it. The interior is almost all original except for the steering wheel, the instrument panel and all that is original. Even the wood grain on the dash is the original piece from it. Suspension is stock. I've got a three inch body lift on it. I also added some panels front and rear under the fender wells to close it in where it didn't look like open space. The engine is not original. It's a 355 blueprint engine I put in this last winter. It's got aluminum heads on it, 10 to 1 compression, roller cam, got the headers on it. It dynoed 408 horsepower and 410 pounds of torque. And I had to put a stall speed converter in it for the transmission. And now it's got all kinds of power. It's you got to pull the hat off your head for sure now. <laughs> What kind of parts and pieces did you get from Rock Auto? This past uh, winter, I put on all new fan belts from Rock Auto. I've got a master cylinder that I put on it. Cruise control transducer, I probably got two or three of those running. U-bolts and the grade eight bolts for the suspension system on the springs, I've got the, from there. I've got some spring shackles for the rear from Rock Auto. They seem to have the products I needed and I couldn't find anywhere else. Congratulations, Clyde Schaefer winner of the Rock Auto Restored Award here in Bristol. The first generation Chevelle was Chevy's first muscle car, and back then you could pick one up for about 2,500 bucks. Jeff Knup 66 is probably worth a little bit more than that right now. It's a beauty, and it's our next producer's pick. It's a SS396 360 horse, four speed with a power steering, power brakes, air conditioning. Off the car in 2014, frame off restoration, frame, a lot of parts have been powder coated, rear end's been rebuilt, motor and transmission rebuilt, and everything's been refurbished on it from top to bottom. Three year project. How much of the work did you do yourself? 90% uh, of it. I had a friend, Terry Travis, he helped with the majority of it, and uh, Junior Carswell helped the interior, and Fred Probst helped us done the painting, but me and Terry done the majority of the body work. What do you like about the marina blue color? That's the original color for the car, but before I started on it, you don't know what kind of car you're going to get or what color, and it ended up that's what it was. So I wasn't big about changing colors on them. Even the engine is original, right? It is the original engine for the car, yes. 
It's a 396, 360 horse motor. It's been gone through everything new in it. The head's been refurbished. The carburetor's good on it, been redone. I had to bore it out a little bit because it had a little bit of wear on it, but other than that, pretty well stock motor. The stance on it is stock. I did nothing to the springs or lowered on it. I like the stock looking stuff, but I like big wheels and tires and brakes, but that's basically all that's been changed on it. Cars like this are always a work in progress. How did you know it was officially done? I don't know if they're ever done. You always got stuff to do to them, things to change, so I don't know if they're ever really done. Still more Menard Chevy show on the way. We've got two generations of Camaros and a one-of-a-kind Corvair you'll have to see to believe. The Menard Chevy Show is brought to you by Performance Unlimited, your great engine experts, building your dream and ours one engine at a time. Willwood Disc Brakes, high-performance disc brakes and brake components. Exalta Coating Systems, we paint winners. And by Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. It's Bristol, baby, and this is the Menard Chevy Show. The 1969 model is probably the most cherished Camaro for car collectors. And Randy and Tina Penley brought this one back from the dead. It's beautiful now, and it's our next producer's pick. We bought it in actually 08, 09, and it was nothing. It was just a shell. No front end, no sheet metal. What was the neighbor's reaction when you pulled up with us? He was just getting ready to graduate from high school. He asked me, he said, do you mind? He said, did you get this out of a junkyard? I said, not exactly. <laughs> My wife is her car, so she helped me. She picked everything out, and over the next several years, we built the car. The 350, 350 horsepower with the 700 R4. It's geared 373. It's got disc brakes all the way around it. Michael Kenner from Tozeville, North Carolina, painted the car. David Grogan, Dave's trim shop in Morgan, did the custom interior. Other than that, I did everything else. Now, what's it like for the two of you to have worked on this a bit together? You know, as long as we've been married, it's, it's neat. Now, my wife, she's a little bit impatient. Since we did the smooth firewall, we've done away with all the hoses and everything. We had to hide them. So we put a street rod kit up under for the heat and air. And we had took it out, I bet you, half a dozen times to make everything fit right. And it was funny. She said, well, why can't we just put it in there and it work? I said, it don't work that way. And uh, you said she's impatient. She's right behind you telling me to wrap up the interview. <laughs> no, 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 no. She's not that impatient. She was taking a picture of me. My new buddy Charles Briscoe lets me call him CB. And CB's 79 Camaro is certainly worthy of a producer's pick. This is a 1979 Z28 that I bought new in 79. It has original paint, the original interior, and 44,000 miles on it. I've did a lot of work to it, but the car has never been apart. The engine is still original in the car, but I've changed a lot of different things. I changed the camshaft, the heads, the carburetor, but the engine has never been out of the car. It has a 69 Z28 rear end, and it's actually three inches narrower than the stock Z28 that come in there, so that's why I was able to put 10 inch rims on the back and it's sitting stock. The transmission is the original transmission, other than I got an aftermarket valve body and an aftermarket torque converter, but the front suspension is all stock. Now, the stripes are a little bit different than how you bought it. Well, the stripes is a different story. Uh, I was in a Camaro club, and I had a young lady that had a car exactly like mine, so I wanted to make mine stand out different than hers. So I went to this gentleman, and he painted the stripes on. It came from the factory with gold stripes, and I painted silver and black. Now, the interior is almost original. Well, I put a cloth inserts in it, and I added the aftermarket billet steering wheel, aftermarket knobs on the shifter and the turn singer. The class that I have it in is called a street class. So to make it competitive to the other cars, you have to change some different things in it. So I just come to these shows, I look at this, my competition, and I just try to do something a little bit better than them, and that's when I decide what to do to the car. You won't see another one of these anywhere. It's brought to you by Zing T, and it's naturally cool. I am standing with one heck of an oddball. This is Casey Vandenberg. Okay, he's not the oddball. His 67 Copo Stinger is the oddball. What makes this car so rare? General Motors only built three of these cars and only made six engines for them to meet California emissions control. No more were ever made. Right now, it is the lone survivor. It's the only car and the only engine known to exist after 51 years. The Stinger was made to go out and road race. How much have you raced it? I, well, I can't use the word race. Let's say participated in moving events, drag race, road race, autocross. And I tried hill climb 
But boy, that takes a whole different person to do that. <laughs> what is it like to have a car this valuable and then to take it on the track? What's going through your mind? Well, it's scary. Of course, my insurance company isn't too excited about that either. The thing is, is being mindful and, and careful and use good judgment. Because there's one thing, it's just not you on the track. There's a lot of other guys participating at the same time. You told me this car also has an interesting ownership history. Who's had the car besides you? The original owner was a professional photographer that worked for James Garner, the actor. And James Garner at the time was running the Corvette racing team called Air. And the owner followed him around the track. In fact, one of his drivers drove this car at Daytona. How original is this car? The car is basically all original. There's just the upgrades, the things that change. I just recently had it make a change on a part was original, but this is part of it. Basically, uh, only the certain engine modifications have been done to the car, and of course, new wheels, tires, and things of that nature. Fan belts are a real trick. <laughs> if you ever look at one, how it curves around there, you understand what I mean. What a car. Naturally cool, and it's brought to you by Zing T. That's going to do it from Thunder Valley, Bristol Dragway. We've had a great time, and we hope you've enjoyed coming along for the ride. Be sure to join us next time for another Menard Chevy Show. So long from Bristol.